want to do a quick video about targeting. Um, targeting is something that, although most people believe it's carried on by the government and authorities, targeting actually comes from the dark side and it uses, uses wherever it can. It can use friends even, it can use neighbours, but it does then come to you through other human beings or other organisations or other gangs of individuals. And targeting is carried out because the darkness believes that the target is has a propensity for light. And so this is just activated. And it could be somebody well known or it could be somebody not well known. It could be somebody that feels they're not actually doing anything, but they're still targeted. What that means is that they have a propensity for light and that's why they're targeted. Sometimes they're part of certain bloodlines that have a propensity for light, but it's always this um, lightness that, um, this propensity that is the reason behind the targeting. And as a targeted individual myself, I know how to deal with it. Well, I've learned how to deal with it. Um, I reached a pitch of my targeting last year where terrible things were happening. Um, I was evicted, waiting for bailiffs to come. Other bailiffs came and were impounding my car. Um, other things were happening, other attacks. And I felt totally enveloped in darkness, totally in fear. And I didn't know what was going to happen next. And it was a really, I just felt there was no God around, no one could reach me and totally alone in it. And that my last um, stop would be on the street begging. I was even, there was not even an escape from this reality. When I closed my eyes, I was dreaming of life on the street and dreaming of throwing myself off a, a bridge after scrummaging in bins. And this went on for a few months and I knew it was targeting, it was obvious it was, and I spoke to a friend, Louise, about how to deal with it, and one of the ways that a lot of people deal with it is through anger, um, through anger, through attacking um, those that are dishing out the targeting. Often the people that are dishing out the targeting, they don't know that they're dishing it out. They will have thoughts put in their mind that you're a bad person, that you need to stop, that you're doing something, that you have done something, uh, and they do it from this angle. So knowing that they're doing it from this angle, one has to um, sit in the place of forgiveness. So even though you don't really feel like forgiving, I certainly have a very bad temper and <clears throat> just wanted to think of ways to get them back rather than um forgive um but it's the only the only way forward it's like an escape route out of that it's like being in a dark cave and the only escape route out is um forgiveness is to um you know jesus on the cross there he was on the cross and he said forgive them father for they know not what they do he understood that whole thing um of targeting literally there he was um targeted to death and he said that um, I also had a dream about Max Spears when he was in Poland and um, was dying and turned around to the people doing it and said, come on, you don't you don't need to do this. And it was just that, you know, that thing that Max had that um, that ability to um, to forgive your enemies, to just go under. It's like a feeling when Louise shared that with me and I then practiced it with the people around me, I did start to feel <clears throat> a little bit of the darkness clear. And it's a feeling of like going underwater somehow. You kind of escape the attackers by like going underwater. And it's not easy. And a lot of times I don't don't practice it I don't manage um practicing it I just don't it's just sometimes impossible especially if you've been targeted in childhood because you then think well I've had my belly full of it 
I had sexual abuse by my adoptive parents and then I was beaten with a cane by my adoptive mother. And I tend to think I've had my share. And when someone comes at me, I can really, really feel really angry, like boiling rage inside because I think I, I, I've had mine. And my brother bullied me just nonstop and gathered people around. So I know the gang stalking and that. I knew it as a child. I felt very, very alone, uh, very, very battered and um, didn't like being alive. And so that's carried on. I've never liked it here. Um, and when someone comes at me targeting me, I do. I can go to a dark place. Um, and But when I was in that death dive um, where some people can get sucked into a a death dive which feels like everything from every angle is coming at you sometimes even when you look at friends you think oh are they gonna start doing it you know sometimes they they will start doing it this is the pitch of targeting and how it can take place it's it's horrible and it's there's a war raging right now here spiritual war so it is you know they are going for people that are our bloodline that are hmm, that have this propensity they don't want them here um, and so, you know, this place has been prepared to be a very dark place for um, a dark lord to descend. Some people call it Satan, some people call it Lucifer, but um, that is coming. So the targeting is reaching a pitch. Um, so at the time, going through it, Louise said, um, you know, you have to take this, um, this forgiveness. And she said another way out is humility. I wasn't in the mood for, well, I kind of, I felt as if I was battered on the floor. Um, so I, I took this humility with people, everyone around me. I took the real humble, you're this, you're that. Yes, you're right. That's kind of humility, not in a fake way, but in a real, a very real way. And again, I felt something move and some light appear. Using the forgiveness, using the humility, I felt the darkness um, almost part and, um, Relief didn't come at that point. Um, I was searching for relief. And then somebody, I was in a magic group online, gave me some psalms to read. And one of them was, um, the Lord is my shepherd. And I just went out to the park. I read that. I read some other psalms they told me to read, begging for assistance. And um, the person that told me said, ask for this woman to help you, this certain woman. And I thought, well, they won't help me. Nobody's helping me right now. Um, do to get evicted, the bit where you sort of leave with your bin bag and go and get put in a hostel. And um, I, I didn't have the ability to help myself. I didn't have the ability to even think of who to pray to help. So I just followed this guy's lead, this stranger that told me this. And I said, I'll ask for this particular woman. Um, to help me in the middle of the prayer carried on I think it was Psalm I don't know I can put a list below I can put a list of the whole prayer below um, and I just prayed my heart out every single day and then lo and behold um, the woman that I had prayed for to help um, came forward and had somewhere for me to go so um, myself and my child so that is um, you know I won't say targeting is stopped um, it does feel like a bit of a sanctuary here, um, even though it's really humble as hell. But then part of escaping from targeting is to get really, really humble. Um, it hasn't stopped. It does go on. But I deal with it now in the most humble way I can. And sometimes I fall short. And if you do fall short, you can fall short and then ask for forgiveness from um, the people that you've um, fallen short with, uh, because they're in a position of not really comprehending anything they're having thoughts put in their minds um so you can't really judge them as much as probably you'd like to um so this is targeting this is how to deal with it again not with anger because it'll suck it's like a flame coming to a fire and then if you react with anger you kind of become one with the fire and then get devoured by it so what you do you use water as an element to, to cool it um and that the water the water um, is soothing, forgiving. The water is humble. The water is never arrogant. Um, the water is always humble when it's still. Um, and you need to be a still water. And then the darkness, almost like it 
hasn't got the ability then to attack you. It kind of floats over you and then God has a has a space to come in. God can come in. God can come in and lift you up. Um, I don't know why I don't ask for God to come and lift me up right now. I'm kind of still in shock over that the miracle happened. And um, yeah, I have been doing some uh, gin magic, which I know is wrong. Um, I had an awful dream the other night that I was stuck somewhere walking down a street and going in butcher shops, but instead of animals, it was humans. And I couldn't escape. And I ran to the end of the road to go in after my friend and my friend shut the door on me and wouldn't let me in. And I called on Jesus, the blood of Christ, like I do in dreams. And then a voice said, um, but you've been doing gin magic. You can either choose the gin or Jesus. You can either choose the gin and rise up or you can um, choose Jesus and remain poor. And I said, I choose Jesus. And then I felt the blood go over the horrible visions and I was free of them. Um, and then I thought after, God, I, I really find the world of the jinn fascinating. Since I converted to um, Islam, they really know a lot about it and they know a lot about it in the way it sounds fascinating. And then when I met the Sheikh um, and he showed me the portal, of course, you know, I found it fascinating. And then in a weak position in life, of course, I was drawn to my personal jinn. Um, in Islam, they teach everyone has a personal jinn. So, yeah, I did get sucked down there. That's another thing, you know, if you're in that position of being battered by other people and you don't know what to do, you do kind of think, well, should I just um, stop them doing that with some jinn magic? And, um, well, I haven't got to that position yet. It certainly was a consideration. And then I had the dream um, about Jesus. And I certainly don't want to walk down a pathway which won't allow me to reach Jesus. So that again is the lesson of um, spiritual targeting. There's no way out really. You kind of um, have to take up your cross and follow the life of Christ and then pick up um, the New Testament and read about what he's been through, read about the lessons there. And you know, if you really do want a way out Jesus said, I am the gate. If you want a way out of this world and it's targeting, really you're blessed if you're having targeting because it means um, there's a way out, you know? Um, that's why some people are busy um, feigning targeting. So there are people that feign targeting because then they know other people will, will look at them and think, oh, um, there's somebody who's of the light. Well, you need to use your own judgment in whether someone's from the light or not. Are they um, using forgiveness? Are they using humility? Because even if they are targeted, um, they're not using those things, then they're not of the light. They're not being of the light. They're not coming through. And it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and then if somebody um, truly does achieve that, then they do deserve um, our attention, our um, praise, um, our love. Um, because it is difficult and yeah, because that darkness, when it comes down, it's pretty, you know, and you go into a feeling of despair, depression, and it can get darker and darker and there's just no way out. Um, but that acceptance, that vision, holding the vision of Jesus on the cross and following that way, um, it does lead you to a point of sanctuary doesn't lead you to a point of the great life, the loads of joy. I think that's kind of gone here. I, I really do. I think this place is, I think this place is a battlefield right now. And I think if you're in a position where at least you've got sanctuary um, to praise God every day and, and thank God for that sanctuary and not ask for fulfillment or, um, you know, um, happiness or joy, because I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's around right now. But if you get sanctuary, um, you know, like Tibetan monks, they, they all they ask for is like peace. They don't ask for joy or happiness. They ask for peace. Then then you're on a you're on a good pathway. Your your sanctuary is good right now. Um, it's really bad stuff going on out there. Um, so that's all I have to say. And thank you for listening.